Well, it's great to uh, still be playing, and we look forward to uh, getting out to uh, Oklahoma and uh, you know practicing. And you know, right now is kind of a tough time. We you know we uh, didn't practice yesterday, and not everybody will be around today. We got a couple of kids that are sick and unable to practice, and so we'll head out to Oklahoma and you know have a two hours of practice and, and play the number one team in the country on uh, Thursday evening. Are you two different teams than when you met earlier in the year? Uh, I mean, our roster is a little different than the, than the roster we had on the floor when we played them last time. And, uh, and certainly they're, they're much improved for the amount of video I just saw earlier today. I was watching their Florida match and they're, uh, you know, Florida is really good, and I mean, they hit a f they hit 400 against them. So it was, uh, you know, they're they're setting really quick right now to the pins, and you know, it's a veteran team. It's a team, you know. I mean, this is uh, Stanford and Penn State have been the national champions six times, and they haven't been to the Final Four in six years. So this this program is ready to get back where they've been before, and. Uh, they, they had the number one recruiting class a few years ago, and these guys are juniors right now, and, uh, and, and they're, they're hungry and very good. Uh-oh. Is that you? Hey, I'm not sure how it works, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so there it goes. There you go. I'm sure there's a way to turn it off, but it didn't come with directions, so. <laughs> So yeah, I mean, it's how you play, you know. I mean, everybody, uh, everybody's good when you start getting into the final uh, 16 teams, and even some of the earlier round matchups are teams that are really good that can cause some damage. So, you know, we had, uh, you know, I thought we played really well against UCLA. We we held Carstello to only 21 <coughs> kills in three games, so we felt pretty good about our effort. And uh, you know, we had a real grinded out match with. Wisconsin, who, you know, was this year's Big Ten champion, and uh, you know they're they're really good. I mean, they play great defense, and they had seven seniors on the roster, and it really uh, it was really a, a you know a, a demanding match for for the players. And I thought we hung in there after uh, not being very good out of the gate, and uh, you know we're, we're able to find a way to win as the match progressed. Your performance against Wisconsin, you played well enough to win, um, but maybe it wasn't your, your sharpest. Is that as much to do with Wisconsin, or were there still problems on your side? Well, I mean, I think Wisconsin causes problem on, on your side because they're, they're really good. But, you know, we had a couple people that didn't have especially good matches. And, uh, but, but I think, you know, Wisconsin had a similar <coughs> match with Ohio State the day before where the numbers were really low. They play, you know, they just play a real controlled game. You know, they have a great setter, and uh, you know, they they don't bounce balls, but they they keep the pressure on you, and they cover great. I think they're the best team at spiker coverage uh, that we played this year, and you know, they just uh, they just do a lot of things well. Are you excited? Okay, What's bye. going through your head? I mean, I'm all of the above, you know, I'll pick D. Um, I definitely am excited. Um, like I was telling Tony earlier, I don't really know how it feels. I'm not going to know exactly how it feels until I step foot on Oklahoma soil again. So um, that'll be the real test and see how I can um, keep my emotions at bay and kind of really. relax and, you know, just take it one game at a time, practice at a time, stay focused on volleyball. Have you, try, have you tried to not think about too much how special it is to be ending your career 15 miles away from home? Um, far it is? Yeah, I've definitely thought about that. And, um, you know, I think for me the most important thing is uh, trying to win one game at a time. You know, it's, it's awesome that I'm at home, but it also kind of creates a distraction, and I'm not willing for that to be a distraction for me. So, so what are you doing to mentally prepare for that, to not let it be a distraction? Um, I'm just going to focus on the same routine I've been doing all season, you know, talking to my freshmen, talking to my team and how important practice is and how, you know, how important 
we start the game and how confident we are and you know just stuff like that keep it keep it normal the, the match that you had against Wisconsin you struggled with your serve um, how tough is it for you to sort of block that out and not let that affect the rest of your game um, I mean it definitely it definitely affects me but it only affects me for a moment after you know I kind of like slap my hands together I'm like you know I, I know I can do better than that but it comes with a little bit of the hype of the game and you know I need to serve well and then when I calm down you know is when when I'm fine so when I tell myself I just need to get a tough serve a good toss then things, <coughs> things are okay. you feel you need to be ex close to extra perfect with that serve for Thursday night? I mean there is a little pressure to do that but at the same time I know that with the game come mistakes so you know I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be in my own way about it you know I'm gonna try to get a good toss like always, be positive from in line and hopefully it comes up in the numbers. <laughs> Megan, with the way that, you know, the last match against Stanford went earlier this season, is that, you know, only losing in five sets, is that encouraging, motivating, you know, what do you take from that? Um, I think it's, again, all the above. I mean, we had a completely different lineup when we played them before. They have a, a new middle that's playing who's like 6'8", so she's huge too. So it's a completely different line up when you look at it, but I mean, I think it goes back to this tradition. Penn State, Stanford has always been a really good, rich tradition in volleyball, so um, I think just understanding that it's going to be a grind and every team wants to win just as much as the other team does, so um, I think the game is completely different. It doesn't even matter what happened before. I mean, I think they're going to say, yeah, we beat them this time, but then they're going to remember when we beat them last year, so I think it's a, it's a kind of two-way street how we we lost to them and then they lost to us, so it's kind of just going to be clean, clean play, just saying best team's going to win. Micah, yeah. as a senior leader, is there anything that you're telling the younger girls to prepare? They've never been, or the freshmen really haven't been here before. What are you telling them? Is that um, for food? That's food in Oklahoma. <laughs> no. Cats and dogs oh and things like that. <laughs> um, I basically tell them, you know, like coach tells us to let them play. Like as freshmen, they just need to play and have fun. That's what it's about. And we're just, you're just trying to lead them to, you know, one point at a time, the grind, you know, getting excited, playing with emotion. And I, I think the Final Four is mostly about fun. You're there for a reason. So if you have fun, it's definitely, it's definitely going to help you out. Russ, you kind of had a, uh, a short leash on Ellie Franti in the last match. Um, did, was that a tough call to make for someone who's been so strong for you all season? Well, you know, I mean, she, wa you know, she wasn't feeling well. And I knew she wasn't feeling well, so, you know, she, she just didn't look herself. And, uh, you know, we had a couple other kids that were sick and some that didn't even practice when we were out there. So I just, uh, you know, I thought it was a safer thing in uh, hopes that she'll be healthy and ready to go the next time we tee it up, you know. So, uh, but no, I'm not afraid to pull the trigger. But, you know, I mean, uh, she, she's had a great year. And she's, and she's had great matches against some of the top teams we've played. So, you know, I'm confident that she's fine. But it, it also was a great opportunity for Simone to come in. And, you know, she was on fire when she came in. I mean, she had six kills in her first eight swings. And was, that first game was great. She kind of came back down to earth in the next couple of games. <laughs> but, she, she, we, you know, we really needed that when she came in. And... Uh, you know, she, she had great energy and uh, excitement on the court. Watching the video on, you know, watching the TV part of it, it was even more, uh, you know, more demonstrative and, uh, you know, really was, was something that that team needed that time. And we have a couple kids that play a little too stoic, and uh, you, you need to have some energy when you're playing in big matches like that. Now you mentioned the importance of having a strong start. You didn't exactly see that in Wisconsin. What sort of things do you prepare on the big stage, Final Four, to make sure you start strong and continue through the three sets, five sets, whatever it may be? Yeah, we, we didn't start out great against UCLA either, but, you know, it's because the other teams are good. It's not, you know, we're, we're like a lot of other teams. You know, we've got young people, and there's pressures and stressors that uh, get their attention. So, you know, I, I think some of the older kids... Uh, we'll, we'll be fine. You know, us and Texas have both won national championships with players on the roster. So I would think those two teams might be a little more comfortable 
at the at the big stage, but I mean Stanford's been the number one team all year, and and BYU <coughs> played played a great match in in beating Nebraska. I I didn't really see them play much during the year, but I watched their Nebraska match, and I mean they're leading the nation in blocking, and I thought they uh, they played great. So everybody, uh, you know, it's the same for everyone. You know, it's a long season. It's a it's a grind physically. It's a challenge for the younger kids emotionally and mentally to to kind of navigate uh, three and a half months and everything's new for them. It's academics are stressful and then uh, you know their bodies are accustomed to high school season being over about a month or six weeks ago and you know and now they've got all this attention. So it's you know it, it's going to boil down to the teams that play the best, not always the best players. So, you know, I think if we play our best, we have a chance. If we don't play our best, then, uh, you, know, you know, we got hot at the right time last year and we had a veteran team. And, uh, you know, in, in that graduating class, we graduated three athletes that accumulated 10 years of being an All-American. I mean, that, that's, I mean, the last time that might have happened was when we had a similar thing, when that class that won four championships in a row graduated, when those guys all exited. I mean, it was an incredible amount of experience and successful experience. So to replace it with some of the younger kids, the expectations are high and the energy, you know, they replace uh, knowledge with, with being enthusiastic and energetic. So we have to kind of balance that. So when Simone hits one ball and it almost goes into the band, that's what you expect because she's a freshman and she's out there and she's going hard and that's what you want her to do. You don't want her to go in there and, and just tip the ball. So, you know, it was, uh, she hit the farthest ball of the weekend. <laughs> so it was good. When you get to the Final Four, is it a lot of times for each team about those teams? It's about yourselves more than it is the other team to make sure you do the right thing? Yeah, I mean, I mean we spent a lot of time on, you know, I'm sure all the teams are grinding right now trying to get some scouting report information. You know, I'm sure Stanford and Penn State have a little head start because we've played each other earlier, but, you know, Stanford is <coughs> way different than when we played them, even though it's the same cast of characters. I mean, the, I mean, the Pac-12 was, uh, uh, you know, arguably the best conference this year based on what everybody says because of RPI and uh, you know and they only had one loss in that conference so I mean they played 18 or 19 matches against top 20 teams so they kept finding ways to win and that that's really one of the intangibles of a great team is it's not uh, different nights different players step up but at the end of the day they find ways to win so you know we're gonna have uh, we'll have some challenges but I don't think you know, when we played them earlier in the year, I, I felt, uh, you know, I was kind of concerned going into it because of how much we graduated compared to what they graduated. And I thought we competed well and, you know, we had a really bad fifth game. Uh, but I wasn't disappointed getting into a fifth game and we played really well the next day and beating a good UCLA team that beat Illinois 3-0. And, you know, I picked Illinois to win the Big Ten. So, uh, you know, you know, when we were talking about early in the year, you know, what does that tell you? You know, it's still a long season and, you know, things come into play. Kids get hurt. <laughs> Some players step up and keep getting better. Some kids get distracted by not getting enough uh, opportunity. So it'll be, uh, it'll be interesting to see how the young players uh, handle it. And if, uh, you know, the three seniors on the floor, Dom, Nia, and Micah can <coughs> Uh, you know, steady the group and, and keep the, uh, you know, the effort right and the direction that we want to go. Micah, do you have any goals set out for yourself for your final, final weekend? To win. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically all. Um, yeah, it's just to, you know, play it, some good volleyball against Stanford and, you know, hopefully get the W and see what comes about whoever we play, you know, I mean, it's one game at a time, so just to win is basically it. Micah, going off what Russ said a couple minutes ago, you, first three years of your career, you got pretty comfortable with having people who were all Americans every year. Um, how tough of an adjustment was it for you as a setter to have so many new faces to try to get the timing down for that? I mean, it was difficult, but we had um, 
I mean, we have really good talent. We have really good freshmen. So um, I imagine it could it, it could have been worse. Um, but they came in early in, in the spring, and so I had some extra time with them, and they kind of got their college legs under them a little bit. So um, you know, I mean, every team has their difficulties, but I think the freshmen really did a good job coming in, filling some big shoes because we had we had three people leave. So I mean, kudos to them because that's those people are doing well right now, so. For Megan, you know, one game away from getting back to the national championship, you know, what's that feeling like? Um, it's un it's pretty indescribable. I mean, it's just, I mean, I this is my third Final Four. I'm three out of three going to Final Fours, but I've only won one national championship, so I can't look past it and say I've been here before. Stanford hasn't. Um, you know, I played against Jordan Burgess, I played against Maddie Bug, I played against Inky, I played against Brittany Howard. Like I know all of them, they're they're good friends, but um, it doesn't change how I how I approach it. I don't think it changes how they do either. It's it's one game at a time, and yeah, I've been here before, but it it's not just about me. It's not just about them. It's about my team and and what we can do as a team to to try and um, beat them. And I guess that's what the focus is is just saying it doesn't matter if it's the final four. Yeah, there's a lot of hype, but it's still just another volleyball game with a lot of advertisement attached to it. <laughs> Micah, I know you don't like to talk about, you know, personal things, but, you know, have you thought about, you know, what your legacy here is going to be like? Uh, it's kind of crazy for me, you know. I never dreamt of being at a program like this. Um, I had no idea what Penn State was about. I you know, it hasn't really hit me. Like, I'm still saying goodbye to things here. Like, South Gym, tonight's gonna be like the last practice I have in South Gym, so I don't wanna get emotional, but it's, it's pretty crazy, you know? You spend four years with the, mostly the same girls, you get to know them, their family, you know, the coaching staff, and even though it's changed a lot, um, you know, they're, they're a great staff, and I was just like walking in my, I was walking from my car today, and I was like breathing in the State College air, and I was like, wow. You know, like, I'm not gonna be here in a day, so. It's emotional for sure, but um, yeah, I, I don't know. I just I feel like a girl that you know had great teammates and worked hard and accomplished some cool things, and it won't hit me until I see it like in black and white or like on a wall or you know what I mean. So it's just it's just cool. I feel really blessed. Are you supposed to be graduating this weekend? I am. Okay. Disappointed you'll be missing that? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not for not for what's ahead. No. Any more questions? Awesome. Thanks, everybody.